Hi, I'm Julie Smith-David from the W.P. Carey School of Business at Arizona State University. This is the second video in a series introducing you to the concepts of the resource event agent model. If you haven't seen the first video or you want to review the basics, click the button below that says Part 1. Within this video, we're going to extend the basic model by adding in business events, understanding why information events aren't added to the model, and then we'll explore how you can take a number of different exchange models, integrate them together to develop a full model of how the organization adds value and creates value. If you remember from the first video, this is the basic pattern. There are two economic events, an increment and a decrement event, that are linked together with a duality association. For every event, you identify the resources that are either being increased or decreased, and the agents who participate, specifically an internal agent who's responsible for the transaction and the external agent with whom the transaction is occurring. We completed that model for the sales process by seeing that the exchange was a sale and a cash receipt so that we would decrease inventory in exchange for an increase in cash. In this video, as I said, we'll extend this model by adding in the business events and then in integrating individual models for individual exchanges to become a business model. We can extend this model by adding additional events which allow us to capture more information that allows us to better manage the process. Events that provide more information are referred to as business events. They support the economic event, but they're not the, the final outcome. No one is going to be happy if we only perform the business events. They're not going to be happy until we perform the economic events. So let's think about a customer order. A customer places an order and tells us what inventory they want, how many, and what they're willing to pay for them when they want them. They give us a lot of information that we didn't know before. So that information is really valuable. It's going to help us plan all kinds of activities. The obvious one is the shipping, but also we can use that data to go back through the supply chain to plan our production, to even do sales force casting, labor scheduling. There's many activities that could use that information. So we know that it's important. There's new information. This business in, is enriched by getting that information. So even though that event takes a little bit of resource, let's say that the salesperson captures the customer order and used five minutes of their time to capture the order. Well, there's an economic impact and we want to be able to track that. But no one would be happy if the customer just placed the order and nothing else happened. So the order isn't the final outcome. The final outcome is the actual exchange, the sale and the cash receipt. So we're going to extend our model and add in an additional class, the customer order class, and you see that it's associated with the sale. So we're, we're going to take the customer order, we're going to, that customer order is going to lead to an eventual sale, and that sale is associated with the cash receipt. When we take the customer order, we're going to associate that not only with the eventual sale, but with the resource that it's associated with because we know more about the inventory that's going to be requested by the customer. So in this model, I've named the association between customer order and inventory reserves. You notice that in the association between customer order and sale, I just named it sale CO. This demonstrates two different techniques for naming associations outside of the basic pattern. You can use the two classes that are being linked together, or you want to add a name that describes the link so it's more understandable. In this case, the customer order reserves inventory, but notice that it, the sentence doesn't really work as well going back. Inventory is actually reserved by a customer order. So many people believe that trying to give meaning to an association is very difficult. And so the d default technique that's used is usually the name, name of the two associated classes. As you see, I've used that for the link between the customer who places the customer order and the salesperson who takes the customer order. So this is an extended model for one individual exchange. Now there's a third type of events, and these are important to understand because you're not going to include them on the model. There are events that allow you to just share the information that's already in the system or capture the information about the events that we've already modeled. And so they're really the technological choices of how you get the data into your system and out of your system. They're not the events themselves, that they're not the essence of why the business is doing those events. So for example, if we print an invoice 
after sending out a shipment. That's not a separate event within our model because the invoice just takes the information that we already know. So we have the sale event. That sale event we know. Here's the inventory that we, we, sent, we decremented. Here's the price of that inventory. Here's the customer we sent it to. All of that information is represented in the sale. When we print an invoice, all we're doing is capturing that data, printing it out on a piece of paper, and giving it to our trading partner, in this case, a customer. So information events are the ways that we store or collect information and the ways that we use that information coming back out. They're different from the business events and the economic events that represent the economic reality of the processes that are in place, the new information coming in itself, and the economic reality of the exchanges. After you've done all of the individual exchanges, you're going to link those exchanges together in order to create a complete diagram. And when you do that, that, that activity actually allows you to make sure that you're representing all of the resources and all of the value adding activities that are performed within the organization. So when you integrate a diagram, a, a number of exchanges together, if your model is complete, it means for every increment, there's an associated decrement. I call that rule the no free lunch rule. We're not willing to give somebody something if we aren't going to get something back. The other thing you have to check is that every resource has both an increment and a decrement. Nothing can appear out of nowhere or disappear into nowhere. If you follow those rules, that's how you get the power of being able to trace all of your expenses. You know every resource that you purchase, and you know how each of those resources is being used, where it's going throughout the whole organization. And if you do this well, you can produce a, an integrated diagram like the one that I have here. This is actually one we use for an activity that's called Ventura Vehicles. On the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see that there's a purchase process. In the middle, we actually have a conversion process, a manufacturing process, where we use raw material and labor in order to make finished goods. And on the right-hand side, we have the sales process. We'll dig into this in more detail in future classes and future videos, but this provides you a high-level overview of the resource event agent modeling technique that can be used to represent the resources and the value-added processes throughout one organization. These are what we've been referring to as level two diagrams uh, because they follow after you've done a supply chain wine bottle by modeling the individual organization itself.